Hello champions and welcome to today's session. So today is going to be all about overcoming obstacles and challenges in life as we are going to go over the summary and analysis of your chapter The Summit Within by HPS Aluwalia. So without further ado let's get right to it. Before we get into the chapter it is important to get to know the author so this is major hps aluwalia he was in the indian army he was an indian mountaineer and a very renowned figure in the field of adventure he also did a lot of work for people with disabilities now uh, major aluwalia uh, right uh, shortly after he climbed um, the mount everest was actually injured uh, during the indo pakistan war and was wheelchair bound after that he was a part of an expedition now an expedition is a journey with a purpose uh usually it is to ex- uh, get to know more about an unexplored territory so he was a part of an expedition to mount everest with a group of six men and he became the 21st man ever to climb the mount everest so like i said shortly after he actually climbed the mount everest which is so hard such a difficult task for anybody to accomplish he actually suffered a bullet injury and was wheelchair bound so he's seen a lot of ob- obstacles in life he was also a, a padma bhushan awardee and he passed away recently in the beginning of this year i believe so um lots to learn from this great man and we are going to get into the chapter now and see what insightful things he has to say about climbing the mount everest so before we hear his story in his words let's get to know the meaning of these two words it's very important to uh, for a better understanding summit and within now summit is the highest point of a mountain so literally the highest point of a mountain is a summit but in our chapter the word summit is also being used metaphorically to refer to the highest point that a human being can re- reach within themselves now within means inside okay so the summit within means the highest point of understanding that you can reach in yourself okay so Let's get to know how um, Mr. Aluwalia draws this parallel between climbing a mountain and reaching the highest point of understanding within ourselves. So, the chapter starts with um, uh, Mr. Aluwalia explaining how he felt when he reached the summit of Mount Everest, and he said in the beginning that obviously there were a mix of emotions. He felt a lot of very different things but the overwhelming emotion at this point was humility all right now humility means not feeling proud and actually reaching to the top of the mount everest is a huge accomplishment and should make anyone feel very very proud but on the contrary he felt humbled he felt humility by seeing how small he is in this universe all right and he said that even though he was extremely extremely happy he also felt a tinge of sadness and why did he feel that tinge of sadness it was because he had accomplished perhaps the most difficult thing to achieve and now there's nothing bigger for him to accomplish all roads will now lead downwards All right so let's read what's written here by climbing the summit of Everest you are overwhelmed by a deep sense of joy and thankfulness it is a joy which lasts a lifetime the experience changes you completely the man who has been to the mountains is never the same again all right so like by climbing to literally the highest point of the tallest mountain you are overwhelmed by a deep sense of joy and thankfulness so and this joy lasts a lifetime so after you have accomplished something as huge as this you are never the same again you're a changed person forever this is what he is trying to tell us all right 
so now the next question is why do why did uh, mr aluwalia want to climb a mountain in the first place why did this thought enter his mind and he uh, he said a lot of things he said that you know he's always been fascinated with mountains ever since he was a child he loved mountains and not being around mountains actually made him sad and he thought that mountains were just the most beautiful thing in the world and he also believed and now this is very important because this is what connects climbing a mountain to the summit within he said that i believe that mountains are a means of communion with god now communion means feeling a relationship with god all right so he goes on to say that if you were to ask anybody who's climbed a mountain why they climbed the mountain uh, the simple answer would be because it's there and it's human tendency to want to overcome obstacles right so we do overcome a lot of obstacles in life and when we achieve something when we work hard towards something and we achieve it we feel a lot better about ourselves and we feel a greater sense of purpose you know in the world so that is a simple answer for anybody uh, who wants to climb a mountain it's a very very difficult thing to do and if you actually do it you're proving something not just to yourself but to everybody around so you become a source of inspiration and you get to know uh, your own limits what you are capable of so that is a simple answer to this question but uh, mr aluwalia said that he had a more personal answer to this question uh, he had all always been fascinated with mountains and he believed that mountains are a means of forming a relationship with god so he had a more spiritual more emotional reason to climb the mountain and not just a physical reason to climb the mountain so uh, the beauty and majesty of um, a mountain posed a great challenge to him and uh, overcoming that challenge did not just mean proving that you're very physically capable but also you have the emotional and spiritual strength to achieve something like this and this is more about what we just discussed so everest is not just a physical climb the man who has been to the mountain top becomes conscious in a special manner of his own smallness in this large universe all right so now if you ask the question why everest out of all mountains then everest is the highest the mightiest and the most challenging and difficult mountain to climb right so it's a constant war against rock and ice and it's such a tiring and overwhelming journey and at multiple points you think you know this is it i am going to give up now but then you somehow overcome that feeling of giving up and uh, keep at it so all of this you know at uh, uh, mr aluwale also explained throughout the chapter that there are multiple points during the climb where you feel like it's just easier to go back down than to keep going up it seems endless all right but then you overcome that emotion in that moment and you keep going and everything becomes worth it when you reach the summit and you see the expanse the panorama in front of you and you see you truly realize how small you are in this universe right so and this is what he's saying here you become conscious you become aware in a special manner of your own smallness in this large universe so just the mountain itself it's such a high majestic big structure and it takes you so much effort to climb it and then you realize how small you are compared to this mighty mountain that exists and so how small you are compared to the world and the universe that exists around you okay he also a very important point to bring up here is that he also said that there is no actual final answer to why he climbed the mount everest and it's like asking someone why do you breathe or why do you help your neighbor there's no one final answer it just feels like the right thing to do and that's how he felt about climbing the mount everest all right so now here we make the connect between uh, climbing the mount everest and climbing up your own inner self so the mountain that is within you so your own summit 
There's another summit. It is within yourself. It is in your mind. Each man carries within himself his own mountain peak. He must climb it to reach to a fuller knowledge of himself. Okay. So, uh, this is the spiritual angle of climbing a mountain. So, the phys we human beings tend to draw comparisons between a lot of things that they experience physically to a lot of things that they feel or experience emotionally. So, just like a huge mountain in front of you is a big obstacle, oftentimes in life, Things can feel like a big obstacle. Sometimes your exams can feel like a big obstacle. Sometimes failure can feel like a big obstacle. There are just multiple things that sometimes do not work in our favor. And having the strength, the willpower, the endurance, the persistence. Now, these are all words that Mr. Aluwalia used to describe climbing a mountain that you need endurance. Endurance is the ability to uh, keep trying to do something despite feeling pain uh, and then persistence which is the ability to do something despite uh, everything going against you and willpower so endurance persistence and willpower uh, is needed to climb a mountain similarly all these things are needed to actually overcome obstacles in your own life so obstacles in your life are like a mountain and the more you overcome them the more you see that you know you need to keep at it you will reach the summit which is the highest point of understanding within yourself where you will you can have a view just like if you reach the summit of a mountain and you look below you and you have this entire view uninterrupted view of everything that is below you similarly if you reach the highest point of understanding within yourself you will have a view of your entire life from a better perspective and you'll be able to understand things better you won't feel sadness guilt regret and all of these negative emotions that we sometimes tend to feel right so each man carries within himself his own mountain peak he must climb it to reach to a fuller knowledge of himself okay and just like other mountaineer the mountaineers while climbing a mountain help each other out here also you can draw a parallel that you have people in your life that help you out every time you are in a tough situation all right so in the end alu alia said climbing the mountain was a worthwhile experience the conquest of the internal summit is equally worthwhile the internal summits are perhaps higher than Everest. Okay, so uh, despite all the challenges you face while climbing a mountain and at times you might feel like, why am I even doing this? What is the purpose of actually doing this? Uh, Mr. Aluwalia says that once you reach the summit, you realize that it is a worthwhile experience. It teaches you a lot of things about yourself physically, emotionally and spiritually. And uh it changes you as a person. So it's like a once in a lifetime experience. But then he also says that the conquest of the internal summit is equally worthwhile. So in your life, if you're able to get a better understanding of yourself, if you're able to understand truly who you are, what you want and how you can have a better attitude towards life, then that is equally worthwhile. And it's not easy. So the internal summits are perhaps higher than Everest. So uh, it might be even more challenging to actually reach the summit of your own self. But like uh, Mr. Luwalia pointed out, it is equally worthwhile. All right. So that sums up what the chapter is trying to tell us. That uh, journey, the journey to Everest can be compared to our journey in life within ourselves. Both are strenuous, both are challenging, but both are extremely rewarding. And just apart from that, Major HPS Aluwalia's journey to the Everest itself is um, quite inspirational and there's a lot to learn from it. And there's a lot that you can take from it apart from what I have told you right now. So again, it depends on your own understanding, your own perspective towards life. So we have understood uh, a little bit of what um, Major Aluwale was trying to tell us. And for the purpose of the chapter, for the purpose of exams, that should suffice. But when you're reading such inspirational, inspirational things, 
to um, better your own self, better your own life. It's always, like I said the last time as well, good to look at it from all kinds of perspectives and really apply it to your own self. So that's all for today. Join us in the next session where we will actually answer questions from your textbook. And that's all for now. Join Telegram, like always, a bunch of great things for you there. Revision questions, session notes, Sunday fun day facts. And you'll get all the session updates so you will never miss out on a session. As always, we have got you covered. So, like, subscribe and press the bell icon. We have wonderful things that you can use to your advantage to do better at school and in life. So check out Baiju's classes with a two teacher advantage. Lots of great things for you there. So don't miss out on this opportunity and uh, the links are all in your description box. So do uh, take some free trial classes and see how they work for you. So that's all for today. Thank you so much for joining in. See you in the next session.